so with that, I think we're going to... I think we're going to get things going for here. Uh, talk amongst yourselves, questions, comments, you want to share what happened at your tabletop as a DM or a PC. All of that is, is always welcome here. All right, so we have a random character generation guide, and Bubonic was very nice enough that he turned it from a Word document that I had into a bit of a flow chart. Now, he even made it so that uh, the rolls can be made in the calculator. Um, though I like doing it uh, kind of piecemeal because it allows us to think about the character one step at a time. Roll something, pause, think. Roll the next thing, pause, let's connect these dots now. Do it a little bit by little bit and go from there. Alright, so first thing we're going to roll is a percentile die. And we're doing this on a 1 to 45 is a female character, a 46 to a 90 is a male character, and 91 to 100 is a multi-class character. 77. Okay, so we have a male character. By the way, Huey, this is the this is what the template looks like, the one that I, I was working on, uh, the the dwarf from last night. So we're gonna change this to a male. Now we're gonna look at the race of the character, and that's gonna be a D10 and re-roll the 10. Nine. Hey, we have a tiefling. Uh, I think Dark Wolf, you were uh, you were really hoping for a tiefling. Hey, and hey, thank you, Dark Wolf, also for uh, uh, for the host. Okay, so we have a tiefling character. Tieflings, if we stick to the core PHB, do not have a subrace. Though because they are a they are a half human, like half elves and orcs uh, are. Um, this is going to decide maybe personality wise, even looks wise, does uh, does he favor his human half or his fiendish half? And we're gonna do that's just gonna be an odds or evens. So here we go. We're gonna roll it again odds. Um, so he's going to favor his fiendish side. Now, what does that mean? Maybe instead of feet, uh, he has, uh, maybe he has like the cloven hooves. Maybe his tail is a little bit, uh, you know, it has like the little point on the end. Uh, maybe his horns curl a certain way. Maybe it's a tiebreaker for whatever personality traits we want to give him as we develop them. Um, there's nothing mechanical. This is just a way to help differentiate him. Bruce says, the only downside to this build is that now it will be even harder to pick my spells. I have to get spare the dying and healing word. Well, that's <laughs> that's a give and take. Quay says, yeah, I used your template to make my other buddy's character. I made a human paladin. It was pretty easy the second time around. Yeah, nice. Yep, yep, Dark Wolf, uh, we have a tiefling naturally generated at that. See, if we just trust ourselves to this process, it it will come about. <laughs> You'll be drawing this character. All right, well, we better we better continue generating. Um, uh, we better continue generating him. Okay, we don't need to worry about Dragonborn scale. Uh, we don't have a Dragonborn character. Now for the alignment, we're going to roll 2D 100s, one for each of the axes of the alignment uh, chart. Change that to a 2, hit roll. 92 and 1, we have another evil character. And this would have been evil even on my old chart, too. Um, so, 92, that's evil, and 1 is lawful. So we have a lawful evil character. Uh, boy, this uh, this uh, this region really has, uh, has people kind of at odds and out for themselves. Next, we're going to roll the level. We're going to do that on a percentile. Turn, uh, print the, change that to a 1d100. Hit roll. 86. All right, it looks like we are making a level 15 character. Easy enough. And now we are going to determine how many feats, if any, this character is going to take. We're going to do that with a percentile roll. Four. Okay. This is going to be all ability score increases. We're not going to take feats with this character. Next up, we're going to roll a 13-sided die. We can do so down here. Change that to a 13 and hit roll. This is going to determine our background. He is an urchin. 
Okay. Urchins don't have any kind of origin right here, see? Though we are going to roll twice for personality. And then 3d6 for ideals, beliefs, and flaws. Let's change this to a 2 and hit roll. We have 2 and we have 8. And then we're going to change this to a 3d6 and hit roll. And drop in placeholders. 3, 3, and 5. What do they mean right now? It's not going to be important. Just not immediately. Peru says, can't wait to see it. Yeah, evil too. <laughs> You're using these characters in your game session? Uh, yes and no way. Um, the characters we're generating are individual exercises in both the mechanics of character creation as players and as a bridge between players and DMs with storytelling. Uh, the challenge comes because we have no idea what this character is when we start, and can we build a functional character that exists in some kind of uh, society or area? and then ultimately weave them together with a couple other characters to be able to tell a campaign story. And that campaign story is going to be told on Saturday. Uh, in the meantime, if you look at the weekly schedule down below, you'll see that we have... Um, um, it, it all kind of builds to that point. Clark, hey, welcome. Not the best people here. Yeah, yeah everyone's evil. Best sleep with one eye open. <laughs> Welcome, Clark. We are getting into the middle of a, of a brand new character. Alright, just a few more things we can randomly produce here on page two. Oh, actually, wait. Did I even roll a... Uh, I don't think I rolled a, a class. Not yet, anyway. Okay, yeah, because he moved it down a little bit further. So we're going to roll a d12 and determine which class this character is. That's this nice golden one if you're using this dice roller. An 11. An 11. Ooh, we have another warlock. And which kind of warlock? To determine that, we're going to roll 2d3. One for the uh, one for the patron and one for the pact. Let's change this to, a th to that, and we're going to roll two of them. Three and three. Great Old One and Pact of the Tome. So goo for Great Old One. Some people call them gulaks. There we go. Yeah, Tiefling. <laughs> this is right up your alley, Clark. And Dark Wolf, and uh, this would also be uh, Romonger as well, uh, since he's currently piloting a Tiefling. Okay. Are you starting to get ideas? Maybe, maybe some vague things, right? We, now, now that we see a Tiefling, we have a we do have a, a physical silhouette of what he might be. These numbers are still floating out there. They're kind of twinkling against the dark. And we're going to further define him because of this. Here's our... Here's our stat line for tieflings. They're going to start at 4 foot 9, and we're going to roll 2d8 to add the... Uh, add inches to his height. We're going to add 10 inches. Okay. Five foot seven, and we're going to take this same ten, and we are going to multiply it by two d four pounds. Three. We're going to add thirty pounds to a hundred and ten, and so he's a hundred and forty pounds if he's just standing around in his skivvies. This is something that we haven't done a lot of, and I can I can start to incorporate it or at least make mentions of it in future broadcasts. But things like um, encumbrance weight. How much stuff can you carry does, well, it can come into play. Especially if you have strength as a dump stat, you can't carry around a whole lot of heavy stuff. Okay, next up is the age range. This is spread out on a distribution curve over a D100, so we're going to roll that. 31. 31, he's going to be a young adult. Now, at home, 
you don't necessarily have to type in young adult and then give an age. I do that here to help keep us in the mentality if it comes down to a decision about something, he, a spell he'd take, uh, an attitude, or a, a way that he'd convey himself. Something along those lines. Now, of the tieflings... Young adult is two. Right? So there, and then we look down here, then we cross-reference this, boom, there's tiefling. A young adult tiefling is between 16 and 25. Or in other words, that's going to be a D10. We're going to roll one D10. Seven. Okay. So, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. There we go. So the random aspects of the character are now set. We have, um, we have a, a fair outline, and now we can start shading things in. We can start filling this character in. We're going to minimize this. And we're starting with backgrounds. When we do this randomly, I find it's easier to go with the background because we want the character to be developed around a story. We want the character to be flushed with um, with purpose and uh, and just to be more rich in narrative. Not that you can't do it the other like the traditional way, but usually in that in that method, um, we tend to focus more on stats. And we describe our character as, oh, I'm a dwarven cleric of the light. That doesn't tell us really a lot about your character. Instead, our character is an urchin who at some point in time found, uh, found the patron to make the pact to this great old one. And, um, and he has lived a life that has led him to be selfish within the confines of the law of the land. And now we're going to explore his personality some as he's growing up in front of us. As he's reaching this age of 22, what has happened? Oh yeah, King. King loves the tieflings. <laughs> Actually, for, for that Kappa, it should be like Kappa King, right? We, we can just put a little, uh, we can put like a little gold crown on his head. <laughs> All I ask is that he has a beautiful tail. Hey, Romonger. We're, uh, speak of the tiefling, right? <laughs> we were actually just talking about you because we, we did make a tiefling character. So if you want to make a tail request, I'd suggest talking to Dark Wolf because she wants to make this character uh, as we're streaming the creation tonight. All right, backgrounds are in alphabetical order. So we start here. Boom, ba -da -dum. Sorry, it's flashing quickly. Hopefully it doesn't cause problems. Soldier oh, and Urchin. Let's see, we get skill proficiencies in sleight of hand and stealth. We get tool proficiencies with a these guys kit. And thieves tools. Equipment, a small knif. That doesn't necessarily mean dagger. We're talking like a little pocket knife or you know, like a letter opener, that kind of a thing. a city map, and we will... <laughs> we're going to be making one of those, actually. <laughs> um, a pet something. They put mouse in there. Is it a mouse? It could be. Is it a rat? We had a pet snake, and actually, uh, Dark Wolf uh, kind of turned that into carrot snake. So if you agree with someone, you can put in the, the carrot. <laughs> um, I haven't uploaded that yet, but you can use the command if you want all the same, and I think we'll, we'll get what it stands for, Dark Wolf gonna get a pet of some kind a um, a sentimental token of some kind being an urchin the presumption is you're an orphan he could very well be an orphan there's I mean that happens um, however if we flavor him in a certain way and we want this token to be uh, what if he was young and successful and he lost everything and so it turned into like Scrooge McDuck's first dime like, that's his most valuable treasure of them all. So that sentimental token could be something like that. And... 
common clothes. And a belt pouch with 10 gold in it. Da -da -da -da. Feature. So this is our background feature, right? Features and traits down here. City secrets. This allows you to navigate around uh, the city in which you were an urchin more accurately, more quickly. You know the shortcuts, the alleyways, the sewer system, whatever is in incorporated in that. I think there's like a, I think there's some cat hair that's been hanging onto my hat. And uh, by the way, it's a lovely onion dome hat. Do you like it? Beep beep. <laughs> Okay, personality traits. Let's fill in the silhouette a little bit more. Two, I ask a lot of questions. Number eight. I bluntly say what other people are hinting at or hiding. All right, so just from those alone, we have lawful evil. Now remember, evil isn't getting up and, you know making more orphans or kicking kittens or it can be though this is more of a he's a selfish person he will put his needs wants and desires above others above you know some concept of greater good above altruism that kind of a thing um so he's in this case he's kind of this um he seems to be like this kind of alpha personality this, you know, like, oh, whatever, I'm going to come up and I'm going to just say what's on my mind. I, I don't have a, I don't have a brain to mouth filter because I don't need one. I'm going to tell you how things are. You ever DM for someone with a criminal background? I've always thought that feature was the coolest. Um, let's see. I currently have a charlatan criminal. I, I want to say one of my PCs took criminal. I know one took, um... One took Sailor, and I believe he went with for the pirate route, or eventually he did. I think I'll, everyone will say, no, it'd be cooler if you're a pirate. Um, so it kind of turned into a, a point of, of repetition. Um, I don't know offhand if I had someone who was directly a criminal. Or if I did... Um, well, that's going to depend on Darvik. I'll have to, I'll have to ask uh, my player who plays Darvik uh, what his background is. It could have been criminal. Uh, otherwise, it might have been uh, charlatan also. But yeah, you can do a lot with criminal. And again, if someone's a criminal with their background, that doesn't mean they have to be evil. Uh, it just means they could be a reformed criminal. Uh, maybe they're penitent after being caught. Maybe they're just... They're not redeemable, but they're a, they're a petty thief. And this adventure is kind of putting them on something to distract them. Almost like a, a Thunderbolt or Suicide Squad or pick some other uh, kind of team like that. But yeah, you can have a lot of fun with it. Row hits the ground in violent convulsions after what? Forever waiting to Oh, to get the golden the golden kappa. <laughs> Alright, what else do we have about this character? His ideal is number three. Change. The low are lifted up, and the high and mighty are brought down. Change is the nature of things. Now, this does label that this is a chaotic themed ideal. That doesn't have to be even for a lawful evil. Uh, it's the methodology that he uses. You could argue V in V for Vendetta is lawful evil. Um, he works with a personal code, he does not break that code, yet he does illegal acts, and he does murder people, even though in some cases he's gentlemanly about it, in other cases he's brutal, or he's given a chance at redemption to meet his personal code. Um, this is in, this, so he's an agent for change in that regard. Maybe this character isn't above removing someone from office by death, if necessary, in order to cause the change that he believes needs to be seen in this area. You're pretty sure one of the Pop Shop players had uh, criminal. Yeah, I, I believe so. That might have been Zock, because uh, he was a he was a rogue. Found a pretty cool homebrew background that sort of combines criminal and entertainer. May or may not have to use it when I make Zoe. Yeah, if, if you find a, if it's in a link or a PDF or something, you can share that on the Discord, Clark too. 
Um, I I like uh, I I like looking into that kind of uh, that kind of stuff. Bonds three. I owe my survival to another urchin who taught me to live on the streets. Now, this will be very interesting if, of the two remaining characters we make, one of them is an urchin, we could have a bond between those two, almost like we have this uh, this bond between um, Rakami and Grimhilder. Flaws, five, because we are all flawed creatures. It's not stealing if I need it more than someone else. Especially, uh, so if you're playing a good character with this flaw, you might actually feel ashamed, or you might feel, uh, well, I get it, but I really needed it at the moment, and I used it for good. This is just more unrepentant about the same flaw. So hopefully this is providing some guidelines for how to think like an evil character, how to think like a good character. Okay, that is going to do it for the background section. We are going to come up, you know, to races, pop to tiefling. Oh, a couple things. They have a 30 movement speed. They do get dark vision to 60 feet. They receive hellish resistance. So that's a fire resistance. Infernal Legacy, which is going to grant them some more spells. And when we get to the spell sheet, I'm going to... I want to try and instill a certain way to go about this that will make it easier for you and your DM to follow your spells. Infernal Legacy, we get Common and Infernal from just that. <laughs> okay, that was nice and easy, wasn't it? Collapse that. Go to Classes. Hello, Warlock. We meet again after only one day at that. You linked it in Discord? Okay, I'll pop that up in a little bit, Clark. Trying to make a real evil character is challenging. Um, a real evil character as a PC that you want to continue in a, in a lawful and or good society? Or do you mean as an actual villain, Ro? Uh-oh, Ro-monger's going into the dungeon. Something clicked. You trigger the alarm. Only a 12 or greater can defeat it. You attack with disadvantage, adding a plus 2. 19 and 15, Rose still defeats, the, like, overcomes the alarm and disables it and gains 300 EXP. There we go. True evil tends to break most games. I could see how it would be challenging. Yes, that is, uh, that is good. Or th that is a good point, Peru. Hoinami says, would you say Druid is more fun for a new person than Ranger? Whenever I read discussion about Ranger, it's usually not positive. This is going to come down to, do people just want maximum DPR, damage per round, or do they want to maximize spells, or are we talking crunch? Because crunch-wise, I've heard that Rangers don't have, you know, oh, the best damage output. There's a lot of fun and flavor you can have with Rangers with their spells, with either Beastmaster or the Hunter style. They're playable. You can have a lot of fun with them. They are a linchpin in a party because they can perform really unique tasks. Druid? The Druid is still a lot of fun, too. It might be a little bit more complex than a Ranger would be for a first-time uh, for a first-time player. Simply to keep track of, uh, you know, your wild shapes and what changes and goes from there. All these classes are still accessible, especially at level one. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to dissuade people from playing, especially if, they, if they're putting their heart into it. Um, but it's just different. Rangers are used to nature. They operate in and around nature. Druids are like aspects of rangers, or of, uh, of nature. They are aspects of the coast, of a swamp, of a forest, of a plains, of, of those eight terrains that they can come from. And they are agents of nature in that regard, whereas rangers are more agents of humans who operate in wild areas. So that's another way you can look at, uh, at druid or ranger. Do you want to operate in nature, or do you want to be an operative of nature? Hopefully that makes sense to you, uh, Hoi Nami. Sometimes I might make metaphors that just 
seem convoluted. Rose says making a PC that's evil, but not the mustache twirling reasons. Um, if you're the only evil one in the party, it's not as difficult. Though this means that if you're playing like a good evil character, everything that you're doing with the party isn't to look out for their best interests beyond how their interests serve yours. You are using them to... Um, you're using them to as fodder. You're using them to help get you into a location maybe you couldn't get before. You're using them for their knowledge. Uh, it, it's about a little bit more about selfishness and, and me as a character than the party. As an evil character, you want to look out for your party. You will defend them in battle because your party is a resource for you and you're managing your resources. Um, I, I don't know if you... You probably have an HR department now where you're at, Row, since it's like a professional like engineering firm. If you don't get along well with the person who leads your human resources, um, then then you can say, oh, well, he or she is evil, right? Because they see me as just a number. They see me as a statistic. They see me as someone who like fits in accordance to a, a handbook or something along those lines. I, I'm, I'm saying this tongue-in-cheek, being a, a business guy myself. Um... But that's, if you can draw fun parallels in real life, that will help give you a lot of imagination and creativity towards making a character in a fantasy setting. Clark says, I think a lot of people dislike Ranger because they think it's too vanilla, even though any character can be a compelling character. Um, yeah, I, I, I can agree with that, Clark. You know, Rangers used to be, oh, well, you can either take the, the dual, uh, the dual fighting one, or you're a bow ranger, and that was their specialty. Fighters, you can arguably make a better bow fighter than a ranger, but fighters will never get the utility and the support that rangers get. <laughs> Peru. Ha 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 ha, Yes, yes. Uh, where were we? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're applying a class. This is a level 15 character. Oh, lordy. 15 D8s. And a U, for good measure. 15 D8, and we're going to keep that as a placeholder, because we're not going to be able to do HP until we get this squared away, and we're not quite there yet. Oh, uh, derp. Tieflings get uh, 2 and 1. There we go. All right, what else do we get? We get a lot of other stuff. Level 15, right? Oop. Level 15 and above, this is what we're looking at here. Our proficiency bonus is going to be a plus five. We're gonna get... Uh, invocations at level 15, we're gonna know seven. Ooh. One more than I should. There we go. I don't want to be a cheaty McCheaterson over here. Let's look at a couple other things. We're going to do the spells last. I'm not worried about that just yet. Pack magic. Yep, we get that. All right, here we go. Boom, proficiencies. We do get light armor. We do get simple weapons. No tool proficiencies. We get wisdom and charisma as saving throws. Then we get to choose two skills from Arcana, Deception, History, Intimidation, Investigation, Nature, and Religion. Hmm. So to help guide in which skills we're going to choose, let's take a look at his personality so we're building for his personality and what he wants to do. Especially things like, um, like uh, goals or ideals. Change, uh, change the lower lifted up and the high and mighty are brought down. Changes in the nature of things. Um, I ask a lot of questions and I bluntly say what other people are hinting at or hiding. This then, uh, while we don't have insight as a skill available, that, that's a role playing cue, but I think definitely investigation seems to be something that he would be doing, right? He asks a lot of questions. And especially if he wants to find ways to reverse fortunes of people, that's one good way of doing it. 
And intimidation could be uh, to, could play into this uh, into this as well, right? I bluntly say what other people are hinting at or hiding. Um, that can play into change. I think something like that could be really good too. If you have other suggestions in chat, please feel free to share it. Say, oh, you know what? I'm I'm actually kind of digging this. I, I I'm really getting this kind of an image. And so instead of investigation, what if you went uh, Arcana? Okay, hey, if you're supporting it, if you're doing a little creative thinking, there's not a right or wrong answer. We're building out of nothingness, and so right now everything is still just a big ball of clay that we're having fun with. Is there any chance that some week we'll roll for stats instead of the standard array? I actually did that once, uh, two weeks ago, I want to say, Clark. And uh, we rolled, and we just went straight down with the rolls. We didn't even uh, load them into uh, a rolled array. We just said, strength, boom. <laughs> Dex, boom. Con, boom. And uh, and it was uh, it was interesting. But yeah, we can do something like that. In fact, maybe we can do a week where we just sort of have fun with some different character sheets or different ways. Uh, I can demonstrate how to do a point buy. Um, I was even thinking we could do a Volos uh, week sometime where we make a party of monsters. Okay, there we go. So until I hear otherwise, this seems to be a, uh, a good spread. Equipment. Light crossbow. Or any simple weapon. A component pouch or an arcane focus. A scholar's pack or a dungeoneer's pack. Leather armor. Any simple weapon. Bobacus. Oh, is this is was that your Tomb of Annihilation that you just were running, Bobacus? And hi, Bubonic One. Uh, this is what we're making, Bubonic. Let's see. We'll give him a light crossbow. Quiver with 20 bolts. Maybe we'll give him, right, if he's going Tome, he might be a little bit more of a nerd. We're going to give him a, a component pouch instead of the focus that Grimhilder uses for her Fiendish Pact. There we go. Dungeoneer's Pack. Uh, is he's, he's doing a little bit more exploring, and... There, there could be reasons for this. Plus, it helps give some differentiation between him and Grimhilder. Dungeoneer's pack and... Leather armor and two daggers. There you go. Clark prepares to cast Hellish Rebuke. <laughs> Not another tiefling. <laughs> Dang dice must like tieflings. Yep, well, we rolled a 9, and that's what it was. Now, conversely, Dark Wolf, who's probably still currently drawing, <laughs> is uh, still drawing this character, uh, Dark Wolf uh, was super excited, so we're kind of leveling things out. And, of, of course, King's not on yet, and, uh, and but even King could be countered by Romonger, which means that we still have Clark, who's in the pro-Tiefling camp. And so it's 3-2, uh, it's to two, uh, Tiefling's yay to Tiefling's nay. <laughs> Bruce says, I was thinking... Oh, hang on. Let me go back up. Okay, so Bobicus was running a game. Party just came across an unoccupied tower. Guess got to design a dungeon. <laughs> um, okay, so Peru says, I was thinking of the start... I was thinking of he starts rebellions and whatnot. Tries to overthrow lords or something. Maybe performance or persuasion for turn the masses or something. And Bubonic is demanding a Dragonborn. <laughs> um, maybe not a performance, per se? Persuasion, possibly. Though, keep in mind, Peru, that we do have a character who is 
based on his personality, he's going to be that very forward, like this alpha Chad character who's just going to come up and he's going to say, this is how it is. I don't think he's really in the mood to try and persuade people as much as make his point, make it bluntly and, you know, um, just smack you with it. So we, we still have that in, in a term of intimidation. You can go into, you can go into a debate and you can intimidate your opponent and still use facts and not just have to see, oh, I'm going to beat you up after school. So I think that's still playing to his, uh, to a convincing charisma, uh, style that you are getting the feel for Peru. Though if, mm, pardon me, if you, if you feel strongly otherwise, hey, it's a piece of clay, we'll mold it. Ro is going into the dungeon. A flame jet. 19. Boom. Ro ducks and rolls out of the way and gets another 300. There you go. Offset the female. Yeah. <laughs> that, that'll that <laughs> wake up sheeple. Yeah. <laughs> Derek Wolf. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I think these two characters would play off of each other really well. Grim Hilder and, uh, and two, and to be named character. Um, uh, plus we have two different patrons who might be after the same prize and sending two agents after the same one. <laughs> Bubonic. Yep. Because you're number two, you're technically number one because I don't count because I can just add uh, EXP to myself whenever. Okay. I believe that is going to be that for those fill-ins. We get our invocations and we are going for Pact of the Tome. We are going to get a Book of Shadows. Okay, so that's going to give us... Um, That's going to give us um, some more cantrips. We'll get to that in just a second. We do get a Mystic Arcanum. At 11th level, your patron bestows upon you a magical secret called an Arcanum. Or Ar Ar Arcanum, or however you want to pronounce it. It's a Leviosa. Choose one 6th level spell from the Warlock spell list as this uh, Arcanum. You can cast your Arcanum spell once without expending a spell slot. All right, so we're going to have to do more. We, we do a lot on page 3 as Warlocks, even though we technically... <clears throat> Only get two spell slots. Okay, what else then? Nice. This does a good job of describing uh, uh, Pact Boons. Goo! Great old one. Here's our spells that we'll have access to. We are going to get an Awakened Mind. To touch the minds of other creatures, you can communicate telepathically with any creature you can see within 30 feet of you. We are also going to get an Entropic Ward. See, Warlocks do really interesting stuff to magic. We also get a Thought Shield. That's a good way to hide that you're evil, by the way, especially if you do know it. If you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm not above just murdering people. You can kind of go, all right, no one can know that. And, and, oh, look at this at level 14, because we're level 15. Create Thrall, yay. 14th level, you gain the ability to infect a uh, humanoid's mind with the alien magic of your patron. You can use your action to touch an incapacitated humanoid. That creature is then charmed by you until a remove curse spell is cast on it. The charmed condition is removed from it, or you use this feature again. You can communicate telepathically with the charmed creature as long as the two of you are on the same plane of existence. Oh. So uh, we can we can think about uh, giving him some kind of a uh, some kind of a thrall too. A pair of warlocks, yep. Oh my gosh, yeah, you're right. Uh, you're right, Bubonic. Look at that pair. <laughs> oh, bad luck. It's a bad night to have a curse. <laughs> okay, uh, we can slot our seven invocations. 
And remember, invocations are kind of like spells that you have. They're extra spells or just spells that you're slotting into yourself to have up at all times. Um, we, wanted, we want to go about... Uh, he's kind of our political espionage person, right? If we're going to build off the party we had last week, he wants to uh, bring up the low. So he does want to rabble rouse. He also wants to uh, knock down the high. And so he does want a little bit of maybe infiltration, things along those lines. Now, he is competent with a disguise kit and thieves tools. Um, and by the way, uh, disguise kit is going to uh, help with uh, something like deception. Um, we can give him, we can give him like Mask of a Thousand Faces if we really wanted to. Though, what would be some interesting... He's going to be more of the backline warlock also. When you get, uh, if you go Tome, you get expanded spells. And so I don't see him being as upfront as Grimhilda is going to be with her packed blade. Actually, Beguiling Influence, you get proficiency in the deception and persuasion skills. Hey, Peru. I'm, uh, this one's going out to you. Bada bing, look at that. Dark Wolf is giving him really unique horns, though. Ooh, I look forward to this. Bewitching Whispers, you can cast Compulsion once using a Warlock spell slot. So that could be interesting. Book of Ancient Secrets. You can now inscribe magical rituals in your Book of Shadows. Choose two first level spells that have the ritual tag from any class's spell list. This the spells appear in the book and you don't and don't count against the number of spells you know. With your Book of Shadows in hand, you can cast those spells as rituals. Hmm, that might be a good one too. Magic is going to be a big part of this character then. And I think he's going to use it to continually just try and sow different seeds and uh, into the populace's minds. Hmm. Master of Myriad Forms, you can cast Alter Self at will without expending a spell slot. Ooh, that would be an interesting one. Minions of Chaos, you can cast Conjure Elemental once using a Warlock spell slot. You, mm, that could be interesting, too. Mire the Mind, cast Slow, Misty Visions, One with Shadows, Otherworldly Leap. Let's do Repelling Blast. It gives them a little bit of offensive capability, and it's a dramatic flare if someone is getting pushed away by it. Whispers of the Grave would be an interesting one. You can cast Speak with Dead at will without expending a spell slot. Speak with Dead can offer up a lot of information. Now, if you have, if you're a DM and you have a player who has Speak with Dead, um, it can provide a bit of a challenge because you are needing to provide information in a certain way through the spell. It's just something else to keep in mind. I'm not discouraging it, but I think that would be, uh, it's a really neat thing to have him slot in.
which site would be interesting for RP purposes. Let me get two more. Hmm. Bewitching Whispers could be interesting to cast Compulsion on someone. And, ooh, this would be a good one, too. Ascendant Step. You can cast Levitate on yourself at will. Um, so you can just rise up, right? You're giving this speech and you just start rising into the air. Your arms are spread. Brothers and sisters, things must change in Mesomasca. And you project yourself and you are powerful and you are the man behind the curtain. I mean, also being able to levitate at will is kind of fun. Especially, I don't know, what if, uh, what if you encounter an enemy that has tremor sense? So it does have battlefield uses. It also gets you up out of um, out of melee reach, and then you can just look down and go pew 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 with your Eldritch Blast. So actually, if he can do this with the Ascendant Step instead of the Repelling Blast, because he himself can move and he should, we should probably take Agonizing Blast. And that way we're dealing a little bit extra damage, since we're not really worried about pushing people away from us. Okay. Charisma is definitely going to be the most important for our Warlock. We also seemingly want to make him uh, intelligence-based. Well, or, or dex-based is going to be a big one, too. Because we have two dex-based skills. Charisma, int, charisma, charisma. This is going to be an attack and a defensive stat for us. So probably go 14 here, 13 here. Hmm. Let's look at his personality. I owe my survival to another urchin who taught me to live on the streets. In this case, maybe we can make him a little bit of a weaker character. You know, do, well, do we see him using strength? Do we see him using his wisdom? Probably. We could make constitution his dump stat. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that. And it would play into his character and show that he has a bit of a weakness in, in, in the hit points department. Is that good or bad? Well, he if he is meant to have other people around him, right? If he can create a thrall, if he can do all these other things, does he have to be the strongest? Not necessarily, because he'll just mind control someone who's stronger and healthier than he is. Ro goes back into the dungeon, really likes the dungeon tonight. It's a bat swarm. 13 and 9, but you're attacking at disadvantage. 9 plus 2 is 11. Oh, almost. Almost, Romonger. So for flavor purposes, why don't we do this? Constitution 8 will make his, uh, his strength 10, and we'll give him a 12 in wisdom. Mm, pardon me. Now, after racial modifiers, intelligence bumps to 14, charisma bumps to 17. This is at level 1. Level 4, 8, 12, and when he gets to 16, he'll have a choice of uh, an ability score improvement or a feat. But because we rolled it, he's going to get 4 ASIs. And remember, that is plus 2 to 1 ability, or plus 1 to 2 abilities. I think our first one, we're going to take his charisma to 19. On our second one, we're going to put 1 point in charisma to bring it to 20, and then we can put another point in, um, I don't know, let's say dexterity here. And then we can use his third bump in order to, hmm, what can we do? We 
we could bump his dex up, we could bump his whiz up, or we could put his intelligence up as well. Why don't we go one and one? Dex to a 16, int to a 15. And then he'll have a choice to make when he hits level 16. Ro, res please. You're dead, but not for long. When the spell ends, you find yourself as a female undead paladin. <laughs> so was that really a resurrection spell that they cast, Ro? <laughs> you might want to talk to your friends. Oh, yeah, Ro. Uh, Dark Wolf is also uh, an undead. <laughs> okay, now with this, strength is zero, dex is three, con is minus one, int is two, wisdom is one, and charisma is five. Come over here, and this somewhat reflects what we have going on. Three, constitution is minus one, intelligence is two, Wisdom is going to be six. And then our charisma is going to be ten. Ooh, nice. Yeah, th there is a there is a cooldown. Um, Huey, if you're still out there, are you a, are you following along all right with how we're making this uh, advanced level character? Now let's come to acrobatics. This is dex based. That's going to be a three. Let's go to our other decks. This is going to be an eight, and this is going to be an eight. Next up, we have animal handling, which is wisdom based. Wisdom is one. Let's find our other wisdom. Uh, that insight, medicine, perception and survival. Arcana is intelligence based, so we have two. History is two. Investigation is seven. Nature is two. Religion is two. Next up we have athletics, so that's going to be a zero, and that's the only strength based one, leaving us now with only charisma skills. Charisma is five plus five, so we have a ten deception. We have a ten intimidation. We have a 5 performance, we have a 10 persuasion, and there we go. Our passive perception is going to be 11. That's 10 plus your modifier. Yep, Huey, uh, remember, if you have questions about the order in which we're doing any of this, stop me and ask. You're not interrupting some great juggernaut that cannot be uh, slowed down, I won't get upset. The whole point of, um, the, the whole point is to be a lesson in how to go about this kind of a thing. King is going to love Clark even more because, oh, you're a male gnome cleric. <laughs> yep. If you can find some way to have some sort of like halfling gnome tiefling breeding project going on and uh, create some, uh, some like new thrown together race from that, uh, that'll completely make his day. Initiative is based off your dexterity modifier. And armor class, is we have leather armor, so that is going to be 11, plus our dex mod. So that's going to be 14. And that's not counting if he casts any spells. Hit points. At level 1, you get your maximum hit points, which is going to be 8 in this case. And then we're actually going to lose 1 because of our constitution. So at first level, he gets 7 hit points. Now we're going to get 14 levels of... Um, we're going to get 14 levels of what I do is half plus one. So if it's a D8, you get five hit points every level as you level up. It creates it nice and steady. It prevents, uh, it, it just makes it more consistent, in my opinion. And for my play group, they enjoy the consistency. Because uh, it can be tough, especially let's say you roll a barbarian that gets D12s. And you have this like frontline fighter and he's meant to be in the mix and you know give hits and take hits. And for the couple levels, you roll 1, 2, 3, as opposed to 10, 11, 12. So a lot of people would rather just say, yeah, I'll take 7 every level. It's nice and predictable, and you can work with it. Uh, so then, uh, so we have our 7 from our beginning. And then we're going to have 14 levels 
times five hit points. Then we have 14 levels of minus one hit point because of our con modifier. Then it's actually going to be minus 14. So really what we can do is minus seven and subtract this. Uh, so five times four is 20. So we have 70 minus seven. So he has 63 hit points. There we go. Nice and easy. There we go. Got it done. And if this were ever to change, let's say that he puts his next ASI into Constitution and brings that to zero, we're going to add back 14 hit points, just like that. Um, you know, one, one for every level. And if it goes to plus one, same thing. It's going to ripple forward. Plus two, it'll ripple forward for every level. Nofflings, <laughs> says Dark Wolf. <laughs> Tiefling Warlock, isn't that a bit on the nose? Yes, Bobicus, that is kind of, uh, that, that is very, that's a good blend. It's Clark says, one tiefling stud in a brothel full of gnomes and halflings in a world where tiefling is an, an infectious race, but the child keeps the size of the other parent. Easy. <laughs> this is kind of like, uh, we're, we're kind of like Pokemon breeding now. <laughs> tiefling, I choose you. Tief, 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 tief. <laughs> Bruce says, I feel like it's a waste of a wish to turn someone into a Noffling. <laughs> I hereby wish everyone in the chat besides me is a Noffling. Oh no! Uh, speak of the devil and he will arrive. Hi, King. <laughs> um, we are making a Tiefling, King, just as a heads up. Yeah, <laughs> does King want to be surrounded by Nofflings? Dark, uh, Dark Wolf says that uh, you think he's trying to take over Mesomasca? Uh, maybe. I'm not opposed to that idea. Now let's sing the Noffling Song of Friendship. <laughs> it's Clark. Finally, I have a reason to kill all of you. <laughs> well, that ha 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 was from Peru, but <laughs> you guys are something else. Oh, okay. So, page one is taken care of. We have a, we, I think we have a good solid uh, start here. Remember, he needs a pet of some kind and he needs a sentimental token of some kind. As well, we need to go to page three because this is going to get interesting. There's a couple things that we need to do first before we look at Warlock. Namely, he, uh, Tieflings get some intrinsic spell casting. You know the Thaumaturgy cantrip. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the source of this power. That way we know as players, or if our DM wants to see our sheet, he or she can see, oh, so this is where this is where the person took these different uh, these different spells or where they got them from. Then down here. Um, you know the Thaumaturgy Cantrip, and then you can cast Hellish Rebuke as a second level spell, and then the Darkness spell, which is, uh, which is second level, so we, we can kind of keep that, uh, we can kind of keep that here. Whoops. We go. And then we have to go to the classes. There's Warlock. We are going to be getting a couple bonus things. Let me put those down here first. Which, by the way, we are going pure Warlock, which means we're casting off of Cha. Our spell save DC is 8. It starts at 8. Plus your ability modifier, so we're at 13. Uh, plus your, um, um, plus your, uh, ba -da -da -da, proficiency bonus. So that's another five. Spell attack is your proficiency plus your ability mod. So plus ten. This should always be, just be eight more than what your spell attack is. Uh, 
Tome, okay, we get uh, three cantrips from any class's spell list. So Tome is one. Tome is two. Tome is three. And we should indicate which list we pulled it from to be thorough. Then we get Mystic Arcanum. A magical secret called an Arcanum. Choose one six level spell from the Warlock spell list as an Arcanum. Uh, without spend expending a spell slot. Okay. There's our first Arcanum. We get a 7th uh, seventh level spell at 13th. There we go. And we get one 8th level at 15th. So we just, we just squeak that in there. Okay. Next up, we have the Great Old One. Uh, that's our ability. Okay. We don't need to worry about that. Thought Shield is its own thing, as is uh, Create Thrall. So what we're going to do then is make a list of the uh, spell uh, the the spells we can take that would count as a Warlock spell that are not normally found on the list. The, I'm going to put these in parentheses because these are options for us to take. It doesn't mean we get them for free, like Domain Spells for Clerics or um, for Druids get certain regional spells that they have access to. We want you to be our friend. Friendship, friendship till the end. <laughs> That's the Nofling song of friendship. Fight one Tarask sized Nofling or 100 Nofling sized Tarasks. For adjusting AC based on size, if so, one Tarask sized Nofling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just kill the giant Nofling. 100 things with regeneration would be terrifying. You're basically just making Zerglings. <laughs> thanks, for, <laughs> thanks for the idea for the encounter. <laughs> and that look on uh, It's Clark's uh, <laughs> those eyes. Dissonant Whispers, Tasha's Hideous Laughter. Down here. Detect Thoughts and ta Phantasmal Force. By the way, King, did you find any, any counter-arguments for the Hunger of Hadar and Double Sight? Clairvoyance and Sending. Fourth level. Dominate Beast. And Everd's Black Tentacles. Fifth level, we can replace Dominate Person and Telekinesis. Yeah, I got a counter-argument. You just got caught up with teaching new people that I let it slide until it was too late to get into it. Oh, okay. Well, you're welcome to put the... You're welcome to put it up there. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm still kind of doing... You know, we're kind of teaching as we're going along. Okay, no, that's fine, King. At your, at your leisure. The night is young. Oh, right. The Book of Ancient Secrets is going to give us a couple bonuses here. You can now inscribe magical rituals in your Book of Shadows. Choose two first-level spells that have the ritual tag from any class's spell list. There's our starting two. He's level 15, so we can give him a chance to have a couple more rituals that are inscribed in there.
On your adventures, you can add other ritual spells to your Book of Shadows. When you find such a spell, you can add it to the book if the spell's level is equal to or less than half your Warlock level rounded up. Okay. So we'll give him, let's see, he's uh, level 15. We'll give him uh, 3d4 extra. Nah, that might be for kind of a quasi NPC. Let's do a 2d4. All right, we're going to give him four extra rituals that he's just picked up randomly along his way. And so those are going to have to be, if it's rounded up... When you find such a spell, you can add it to the book if the spell's level is equal to or less than half of your Warlock level. Alright. So we're going to get to put four in. I don't know, let's kind of mix it up. Let's say he learns a random one. Um, one. Two. You get some Arcanums there. Uh, three. And... We'll give him four right there. Okay, that'll work. Ro actually might go with the Horn Bling idea. Um, Molly Mox Horn Bling. Uh, what is that? Uh, what is that inferring, Clark? Ro says, I've seen it done and I love fancy things. If anyone asks how or why he has fancy things, being a former urchin, they were stolen. <laughs> well, I mean, he's not necessarily above that. Okay, now, and to weave the normal spells that are learned as a warlock. We come up here, and you... Uh, oh, I'm sorry, real quick. 15th, we know four cantrips. So, actually, here's our, here's our actual warlock cantrips that are normal. Two, three, and four. Okay. So we know two spells, and we only have a slot level of first. Then, as you see, we go to second level, we know three spells, but we can still only cast a level one spell. So this means at level one, we are going to get these spells, level one. Level two, we get one more. Now, at level three, we know four spells, and our slot goes up to two. So here's three that we know. We can learn a fourth, and it can be up to level two. Can we put our level three spell in one? Yeah, of course, if you really want to. Otherwise, um, this, is, this is how it's shaking out. So you're going to have, if we just stick with the default, you have three level ones, and then it's going to go like this. Level three. Level four. Level five. Level six. Level seven. Level eight. Level nine. Now, with Warlocks, this is important to consider. Eight to nine, we gain, we gain one here, right? Nine to ten, we do not know a new spell. So level nine is going to just be flat there. However, at level 11, we, uh, or uh, yeah, at 11th level, we do gain a new spell. Okay? And that can go in fifth if we want. This is going to jump, boom, like that. Now look, 11 to 12. 12, we do not know a new spell. At 13, we do. And at 13, our slot level is 5th. Which, by the way, yeah, the, the Arcanums are meant to be a way for you to cast advanced level magic, even though your Warlock spells end at 5th. Level 13, and 
at level 14, boom, still 12, but at level 15 we get a 13. Or, uh, I'm sorry if I'm confusing you. There's nothing that's going to keep us, if we wanted to, to say level 15. You know what? I, there's a really solid set of spells for this character in our third level slots. So let's take our level 11 and move it up there to level 6. That's perfectly fine. You can downgrade in that fashion. But this is how kind of the raw sheet is going to look before we do any adjustments. Um, Huey, if you are... This can seem confusing. If you're not sure how to read this chart, let me know and I can, I can go over it again with you. Um... Molly Mock is a tiefling PC on Critical Role. He's a bit of an extrav extravagant character, appearance-wise, anyway. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, aside from choosing the spells themselves, uh, which we will get to, he's pretty much done here. There's a couple other items, like the attack bonus, that we can get into. Um, what I'm going to do, though, and oh, by the way, we need to think of a name for the character, as well as some cursory, as well as some cursory details for the physical appearance. Jam Jam is here and is wondering who goes there. King, is that you? It stops and moves forward and suddenly responds. Do do do. <laughs> Is King the type who would uh, be caught up in a sandstorm? If so, that's rather derude of him. Critical Role Art on Twitter if you want to get an idea. Oh, thank you for sharing that, Clark. Uh, we also need to think of a pet for this character and some kind of a sentimental token. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the stream here. And I am going to, uh, I'm going to just grab a snack, get up and stretch. It's been about an hour and a half uh, that I've been going. And we will come back and we will work on a map. We're going to map out Mesomasca and we're going to go over some DM notes and some things like that. We're going to do that for, I don't know, hour, hour and a half. And then we'll come back and it's, it's just jam out time. Like we talk, you can ask questions. Um, I'll make characters, uh, you know, if there's a special request. Uh, I had one. I had one at the store today, and I don't know if he's watching or not, um, but we did get some new players for Strahd, and uh, that would be that would be something kind of interesting. Uh-oh, Peru. Yidget. <laughs> uh, since you can draw one additional card, uh, while you did kind of get dumbed down, I will give you 50 points back, Peru. Okay, so, short rest, and I will be back in just a little bit here. <laughs> 